Wait. Now I'll say it. Yeah. Welcome to Around the Table Yarns. Our guest tonight is Pam Powers from Ikigai Fibers. Pam is going to be demonstrating the embellishment of knitted or crocheted items with her Poketto Chibi. Nope. Nope. Pocket. No, it is Poketto Chibi Just Poketto. Just but it Just says Paquette. Chibi. It's, it's called, okay, so I make things so complicated. So it's called, the yarn is just called Paquetto, and then the whole set is called a Chibi Pack. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Perfect. Just, just call it Paquetto. That's fine. Okay. okay, fair enough. That we can do. Okay, so okay. I'm larger and... Not letting me share my screen on this end. Hold on one sec. Try now. Yep. Perfect. Okay. okay. Now let me get my camera going. It's not seeing my camera for some reason. And I'm just going to go ahead and mute people who aren't muted. So that we're able to hear easily. Okay, hold on. I'm getting my camera set up. Okay. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Yay. Yay. Okay. Okay. So let me see if I can get this kind of situated. Okay. So this is what the, who was our focus? There we go. Okay. So this is what the Paquetto Chibi Pack looks like. So it's 12 skeins of uh, mini skeins. There's 61 yards. Uh, 20 gram skeins of kind of a fingering weight, 100% wool yarn. It comes in this really fun color palette. Um, it's great for embroidery. It's tapestry weight embroidery yarn. So um, kind of like what you would use for needlepoint. Um, and then it's also, you know, good for, you can knit and crochet and all other little crafty things you do with yarn. Um, so that's the yarn I'm going to be using today to uh, embroider. So I thought I'd do, um, I have two embroidery patterns out right now. Um, this one's called Scandy Flowers, and it's a bunch of um, little individual flowers that you could put to embellish clothing or, you know, pockets or what have you. So it's a bunch of little flowers. Um, the patterns come with directions, stitching directions on how to do all the stitches that I used on the flowers. Um, and then it also comes with um, this little printed stabilizer. Sorry, this one's missing a flower, but it's this, um, if you were on the Instagram live, so it's this, it's a, a wash away stabilizer that you um, just stick onto your fabric so this is what it looks like. It's made by um, Sulky, which is a, a quilting supply place. Um, so it kind of just looks like interfacing, like sewing interfacing. And it has an adhesive back. So it's kind of like a big sticker. Um, you would just cut out, you know, the flower that you want to use, um, peel off the, the sticky back and then stick it onto the knits or whatever you're going to embroider. Um, the fab, the patterns come with one sheet of the stabilizer, um, but then inside there's also, um, kind of a template of all of the designs that are on the, the stabilizer. So if you want, you can, you know, get this stabilizer, the sulky stabilizer and just, um, you know, lay it on and just, you know, trace more flowers out with a, a pencil and make. Oh you know, yeah, additional flowers. So, um, anyways, that's a neat little trick, and you can buy this this stabilizer. You can get it on Amazon or you know 
sewing supply places. It's called uh, Sulky Sticky Fabri Sab <laughs> Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi is the name of it, um, and it comes in a pack of twelve sheets. Okay, so um, so this is the the this is the other just to show you. This is the this other embroidery pattern I have. It's called Flourish. So this one is more of a crescent shaped design versus the, the individual patterns. And then this one's made for, um, like you could use it on a shawl. Um, Pam and Beth have a couple samples with the shawls and then you can also use it as a sweater around the neckline. Um, it, the pattern is in, it's kind of in three pieces. So you kind of, you, you, cut out that this is the center and the two sides. And then that way you can kind of position the angle that you want your crescent to be in, whether you want it to be more sharp or more graduated. Um, this sweater right here is kind of cool. It has, it's asymmetrical. So this is the center design and one of the sides and then the other side. So this oh, is I like that. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And it has all these little extra flowers that you can use to kind of embellish other things. Okay, but today we're gonna be doing the Scandi. So I thought what I'd do is just go ahead and start demoing some of the stitches that we have in the stitch guide. Um, oh, great. Basically, there's just, there's eight stitches that we used for all of the flowers. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go down the, the line here and start. Okay, so the first one is called the satin stitch. That's this one. So this is probably the um, stitch that you will use most often just because it's really just the filler stitch. It's just, you know, meant to, to cover up a little area, solid area. Um, it's it's kind of it's really simple, but there are little tricks as far as what direction you go in. So that's kind of the biggest thing about satin stitches is you have to make a decision on like with this stitch, this tulip. So I went horizontal on that middle piece and then or uh, vertical on the middle piece and then horizontal on the outside pieces, which you don't have to do it that way. You could also go, you know, at an angle on the side pieces too. So it's kind of like um, brush strokes. If you're painting a, a picture, there's not really a right or wrong way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could kind of like, you know, play around with it and see what you like best, but there's not, you know, there's not one set way of doing it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this little, uh, tulip. I already have it stuck here on my felt. And this is just a piece of, um, this is a piece of wool felt. And I like it cause it's kind of, it's kind of thick. Like it's kind of, it's pretty, it's a pretty good match for chunky knit um, fabric. So that's why I like it. Um, and I use this, this stuff called thread magic. I really like it. It helps um, kind of uh, grease up the, I don't want to say grease up, but. Uh, wax. It, it's, wax. Wax. It is. So it's, it's not, cause you can buy beeswax too, which is, you know, a natural product, but. It, beeswax is a little bit, um, I don't know, I find that it really flakes off while you're working with it and it's not quite as smooth as this thread magic. Um, I don't even, I mean, you can get it at, you know, a lot of the fabric stores. It's really a hard, you can get it on Amazon too, but it, it's really um, helpful, hmm. especially if you're, you know, stitching. I don't know. So I'm really lazy and I, you're supposed to do, you know, I guess the correct embroidery way is you're supposed to, you know, wind off a piece of thread that's, you know, from your, if you're holding it in your fingers to your elbow, right? And mm -hmm. I'm really lazy and I do a really long piece of thread. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so that's, so, if, so the thread magic helps a lot because other, because then your thread doesn't get, you know, kind of spread, spread, spread. Spread. after a while but I I wouldn't maybe suggest that so it's really nice it looks like a little lip gloss container you just stick the yarn on it and pull it through and it just kind of coats it so anyways you don't have to have that but it makes things easier so I'm using a size 22 chenille needle 
Um, I like it because it has kind of a, a bigger eye on it. I can get one out of the package. See, now my hands are all slippery from that bread magic. So, <laughs> so, okay, there we go. All right. So, okay, so when I start embroidering, um, there's several different ways you can do it. Um, I guess if you were a purist, you don't want to have a knot in the embroidery. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna try and lock the focus on it. If it's going out of focus, please tell me because I may not be looking, but I think it's better than it kind of going in and out all the time. Okay, so the way I like to do it to not have a knot is to start, um, so you're gonna start with your thread needle on the top on the right side, and I'm just gonna do um, like three little, I guess we call them pick stitches. So they're just little tiny stitches and it's gonna lock the yarn in without having to do a knot. So I'm gonna, so I have my little tail right there. I'm gonna come up. Um, I like to kind of split the yarn too, cause then that, that double locks it in, but you don't really have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna do three little tiny stitches here. And then you're gonna, um, you know, you're gonna cover this up with stitches so you don't have to worry about. You just wanna kind of get it centered. But this is a good way to start, um, especially, so if you already had been stitching, you'd have, you know, threads on the back and you could weave in versus doing it this way. But when you very first start, you don't have anything to weave into. Or you could leave a big tail and weave in afterwards too. But I just like this, it's very clean. Okay, so I have my three little pick stitches and then I'm just gonna go in and cut the tail off like that. Okay, so when you do satin stitch on a shape like this, I'm gonna do the center petal first. What you wanna do is work from start in the middle, work in one direction, go back to the middle and work the other direction. Cause what happens is if you start over here, say, you're probably gonna start leaning a little bit because it's kind of nat, it's very hard to keep everything going straight up and down. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start just right in the center. Okay, so you have to, I have really bad eyesight and I usually embroider under a magnifying glass, which I'm not doing obviously. So if you look at me and I'm stumbling around a lot, it's because I can't really see, <laughs> so. Okay. And these are really long stitches, but you know, it's, it's wool. So, you know, it, it pretty much stays in place. It doesn't kind of move around. Um, so I, I think the hardest part is just the tension. So you want to make sure that it's, it's nice and flat, that there's not a big gap. And mostly you want to make sure that it's not pulling the fabric tight. So you just got to, you know, kind of mess with it and make sure that it's laying flat against the fabric. Okay. So that's my first stitch I did right down the middle. And then I'm going to work over to my left. So I'm coming. So I, I came up from the bottom, went down in the top. So I'm going to keep working in that direction. You're going to go bottom to top, bottom to top, bottom to top. So, um, and you just, you want the stitches you know, fairly close together to each other. Um, but, you know, if you have a little bit of, too much of a gap, you can always go back and fill in. So it's it's really, really forgiving. Um, and especially when you're doing with the wool for the first time, you kind of don't really know how far, you don't need to space them too close together. Um, but if you do, that's not a problem too, because it just get you know, give it a little bit more dimension. It'll be a little bit more poofy. So I'm just gonna go through. We like things that are forgiving. I know it's really <laughs> also poofy and poofy. <laughs> poofy. Yeah. I like, I actually like the little poofy look of. You yeah. Know, this, well, the little, little polka dots were very poofy. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, on the sweater. Yeah. yeah. That one's where those are actually crocheted baubles. Oh yeah. There you go. So I, I don't know. I saw that. I think I saw it on Pinterest and I said, oh, that's really cute. So I just went through, it's really, it's very quick. I think it's a lot faster than 
embroidering it on actually. So anyway, so, so right here I'm going, I'm trying to, I know it's not perfect, but I'm trying to do just like a straight up and down stitch mm -hmm. all the way across. Um, you know, another way you could do it is to kind of angle it. So it kind of goes in that direction. That's a little bit more tricky to do it that way. Cause you have to kind of use a combination of short stitches and, and tall stitches. But, um, you know, like I said, there's just a lot of different ways you can do this and none of them are wrong. It's just going to have a different look to it. Okay. So I just finished the first half. See how fast that was. That is mm -hmm. fast. Yeah. <laughs> so done. Now yeah. Done. Half done. So I'm going to go over to the right side. I'm, again, I'm going to start at the bottom and just go in through the top like so. Okay. And you're going right through the line? Yeah, I'm trying to go right on the line. Okay. Um, you know, you just- You don't want to stay inside because you want to fill it up. Yeah. I mean, you could, you know, it, it doesn't, cause you're washing away the stabilizer. So it doesn't matter cause you're not going to be able to see the line afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really up to you whether you want to go inside the line or on it or outside. For me, it's easier just to try and hit, hit the line. Um, but it's not, you know, I guess it's a little bit smaller if you go inside the line. Right. So if you get a knot nine times out of 10, it's because you're pulling the yarn too fast for some okay. reason it needs to, to knot up. But, um, so just don't, you know, I guess if you're really in a hurry, <laughs> well, you probably shouldn't be embroidering if you're really in a hurry, but <laughs> you should, uh, but that's, you know, it just, it, you just got to pull it through at a nice, even pace. Don't be jamming it through there. So, okay. Anyways, I'm just going to finish up this guy really fast. Okay. Okay. I think that's pretty good. And if you think things look a little tight, you can go through with your needle and kind of, that kind of pulls them even. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, so look at how fast it was. So the little middle section is done. Uh, um, so I guess the way the sample is, we went sideways. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll just show you how I would start it. Um, I think I would just come down like maybe about here. and just kind of work bottom to top again. Or I guess it's not bottom to top, it's left to right in this. So this is a little bit trickier because you have, because this line is not straight, it's a curved line. So you're, and you're filling it in with straight lines. So you've got to kind of make a mental note of how you want the directions to go or how you're going to kind of navigate around the curve, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be, you know, a perfect curve, but you kind of just want the shape to get across. So this is how I'm doing it. And you just want to go, you know, right up against the other section and um, just keep going down. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. So I think you get the picture, but um um, but like I said, really, really quick, as you could see, you get this thing done really quickly. Okay. So that's, um, satin stitch. Um, I think I'll move on next to just the, the second one on here. So the second one is called outline stitch. It's also called stem stitch. Um, and what it is, is, um, it's a stitch you would use on a stem or on a, um, kind of a, a, a line that you want to be kind of a, a strong line. Cause it's actually like um, you're kind of making this little twisted stitch line versus if it, if it were just like a little 
short stem, like this stem, for example, is kind of short, you maybe would just do one flat stitch there. So, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it on maybe this guy right here and show you what it looks like. Okay. So I'll get some green out. I'm going to put it through the, the thread magic again. Okay, so this one, like I would probably, I so there's no right order as far as doing flowers or stems or what, you know, I always, I have a tendency to go in and do the flowers first. I usually go in and do all the flowers and then I go back and do the stems and there's not really a technical reason for it. I think I'm just excited and I wanted the flowers are a lot more fun <laughs> to do yeah. mm -hmm. than the stems. So I'm kind of like, you know, wanting to see more immediate gratification would be my reason for that. But I usually go back and do all the stems at one time. So, okay. But if, if I were doing the stem and the flower was done, I wouldn't be starting with these little pick stitches. I would just go ahead and, and weave the yarn in through the flower and start that way. Cause I think it's a little, I don't know, this is a little more time consuming to do it this way. I mean, the other thing is, is I guess technically if you used a really light color for this section, you might see some of those little pick stitches showing through. Mm -hmm. So, okay. See now I already got a knot <laughs> from, I'm getting excited, I guess, and pulling this through too fast. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to start here at the top of the stem. Okay, and work down. Okay, so on this, um, you know, I'm all kind of screwed up in this back area. Okay, so on the stitch diagram, it kind of gives you these numbered events of, of the direct of, of the order of how you want the needle to go into. Um, so number one is always where your yarn comes up for the first time. So number one would be right here. It's at the top of the diagram. Um, and so number two, you're going to go kind of a little bit further down. And then number three is going to kind of split the difference in between one and two. So it's going to be okay. one, go down at two, come back up at three. Okay. Oh, so, and this is very important too, this little tip. Okay. So on this stitch, you, you're going to have, uh, I guess we'll call it your working yarn for simplicity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important where the working yarn is held on this stitch. So on this diagram, we have the working yarn on the bottom. So when you bring your needle up through three, make sure this is your working yarn right here that it's on the bottom. And oh, you'll see. see why in a second. Okay, so I that's our first stitch. Now we're gonna go back down. See, I'm already holding it in the wrong place. So we've decided to hold the yarn on the bottom. So I'm going to make sure my working yarn is on the bottom. Go down. This is like number two again. And number three, you're going down and up. And number three is going to kind of kiss that last stitch, the bottom end of it, right? So make sure your, your working yarn is on the bottom. Maybe put your thumb on it to hold it and make that stitch. I got a little fuzz going there. Okay. So what this creates is a little bit of kind of like a, I don't know if it's twisted. I don't think. I guess Almost like a rope. Yeah. Like a rope. That's a good, good way of describing it. So what happens if you don't keep your working yarn at the same position, it's not going to twist. It's going to be. Oh yeah. Kind of loopy. So, I mean, you could actually have the yarn on the top also, but you just got to make sure you do it that way every single time. Okay. So whatever's- Whatever way you go. 
yeah, whatever is easier for you to, or makes more sense. There's probably a way that's kind of more natural. I think I like doing it on the bottom because then you can kind of hold your thumb on it and still see what you're doing. Um, okay, so now we made this little kind of twisted rope line. And then to end it, you're just gonna go in at the bottom of the last stitch. And okay. Pull it through. So again, this is for like a nice, strong, solid one line versus doing, if you were doing little stems, like, okay, so like here, for example, this is a pretty short little distance. You would do just maybe a one stitch, an up and down stitch. Right, right. All right. Okay, so that's stem stitch. And now we're gonna talk about straight stitch. Um, so straight stitch is like what I was just talking about when you just need one little line of thread somewhere. Um, so straight stitch is probably the easiest stitch you can do. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a couple different versions of it. So like on this flower, on this flower up here, all these lines, I would just do straight stitch. Um, so I'm just gonna come in and start doing it without anchoring the yarn just for. And if the lines had been, you know, longer, you might want to go back and do the stem stitch again. You could, yeah. Right. I mean, just the depending. Only thing is, is these lines are really close together. Got it. Okay. So if you did that stem stitch, they're probably you're not going to be able to see. They're not going to stay the... defined. Yeah, it's going to be just one big thing. Or you could go, you could do that and do every other line. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, it's, there's not a right or wrong. It's just a, you know, a style choice, but this is, um, these are my favorite flowers because they're super fast to do because yeah. <laughs> all you're doing is, you know, literally one little straight stitch for each one of these lines. So there's another one that's all where it's the whole flower is like that. And it's, it's great because it little it takes just like minutes to do so um so you just try and you know watch your tension don't pull too tight um it's easier said than done it's really easy you have a tendency to want to pull it right so and just remember um so it's better to err on the side of being too loose because if it is too loose you can always go in through the back and kind of tighten it up but if it's too tight, there just ain't no going back from there, you know? So, okay, so now I'm getting excited again and I'm pulling the yarn too fast through here. Okay. I love getting to see your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Granny's square, my little weird granny's square sleeve. <laughs> I love it. I've written down happy scrappy hexy. Yeah, that's right. I know, isn't it the best? It's so funny. Like, I couldn't believe how fast it went. I mean, I think I did the whole hexi in maybe a couple sittings, you know? So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And you can use, I mean, just like the name, it's Happy Scrappy. You can use all different colors and scraps and, you know? Um, but yeah, but the, the ribbing, I don't know. I mean, you're supposed to crochet the ribbing on and I'm not really... All I really do are granny squares, which I know is still crochet, but <laughs> the whole ribbing thing, crocheted ribbing sounded a little, a little too much for me. So it's, I always think that crochet, so I'm a long time knitter and a short time, much shorter time crocheter. Mm -hmm. And what I really enjoy about crochet is that to me, it's like solving the question of how you make this fabric or how you make this shape yes. in such a different way. And ribbing, such you know, a different way, yeah. for, for knitting, ribbing, you have all the stitches on and you alternate between the two. And mm -hmm. with crochet, you actually make the ribs. Like you go up the rib and down, down the yes. other side. It's, it's sort of like the so different- So what is one easier than the other? Because I didn't even try the crochet ribbing, to be honest with you. Um, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's different. Is it hard to gauge it to figure out? Um, you know, not? everything like that is a practice thing. 
Yeah. I mean, everything is just a matter of like, you have to be willing to not let it not be perfect immediately and, Mm -hmm. and get perfect by trying it. Well, I think that was my disconnect is I knew I would have had to make a swatch and practice Mm -hmm. it. And I just, and I knew I could just knit the ribbing right on. I do think that knitting gives more, it's more elastic. And that makes, I was thinking that would be the case. Yeah. So I think that it's not a bad solution to do knitted ribbing. And like you said in the Instagram, um, there's not a rule that says you can't knit the ribbing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you're not failing if you exactly. knit the ribbing. Yeah. You're you're uniting the two crafts. And that's something we feel very yes, we're, we feel very strongly about uniting the crafts of knitting and yeah. crocheting. <laughs> it makes sense. It it really does. You know, use whatever's best for the the thing you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so as you can see here, very, very fast flower. So very simple. That is very fast. Up and, and down. I, I'm times. looking at it on one of your samples and it does it does fill in so nicely. Yeah. And it's very easy with the stabilizer to get it really pretty on point like that. So I'm gonna show you one other straight stitch application. I'm gonna try and do it in a really bright color so you can see it. Okay. Um, so this is, um, I'm gonna do it on this little daisy here. This is what I show on the, in the instructions. So this is, um, when you have a shape like this, so this is a little teardrop shape. So you could use a lazy daisy, but I was just trying to kind of mix it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to do, instead of a lazy daisy here, I'm going to do three state straight stitches kind of on top of each other and then kind of fan them out, which is kind of a different look. Than the, I'll do the lazy daisy next, but I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to go uh, right up the center. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just keep going. I'm literally going to go up through the same hole each time. So I'm just doing three stitches. Well, I'm really making a mess in the back. So I got all kinds of yarn. Um, I'm making three stitches right on top of each other. So. And again, just watch your um, watch your tension on this. Okay, so this is my third stitch. And so what kind of naturally happens is that they kind of like span out, I guess you would call it, because they can't really sit right on top of each other. Mm-hmm. But they're they're anchored on, you know, from the same place. So they kind of make a natural little, um, what do you call that shape? Like a marquee shape, right? Right, right, yeah. Um, But that's a really simple way of doing a little, you know, diamond shape like that, right? Okay. And it's just three stitches right on top of each other, right? Um, So then the other option, I'm gonna go into the next stitch which is the, hold on, let me try and get this on the camera. So that's the lazy daisy stitch. And that's kind of the stitch that you always choose to fill in like a little, you know, petal shape or a teardrop shape. That's kind of the obvious stitch that you use. I like this just because it looks different. Mm -hmm. And on flowers, you can end up using lazy daisy on every single flower, which kind of makes them all look the same. And that's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of boring a little bit. Um, it's not as embellishy if it's all the yeah, same. Yeah, because you don't want everything to look exactly the same, you know, so. Agreed. Anyways, um, so let me get my. No, I think part of what makes this, um, the appearance of the Scandi flowers so fun is that there are so many different textures. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hopefully. Okay. So 
this is the lazy daisy is just a little chain stitch that you anchor on the top. Um, chain stitches usually, you know, where you're you're doing one chain after another, it comes, it just keeps going up like a chain, right? Hence, hence the name. So um for this one, this is a really long chain stitch. Usually it's a, a, a little squattier version, but this is kind of interesting. This is a long flower or long petal. Okay, so I'm gonna come up through the center. So that's our, our number one, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go back down. I guess in theory, you can go down the same hole because you're not gonna pull the yarn through there. So you're gonna go down either in the same hole or right next to it where you came up from. And then you want the needle to come up again at the end of your little chain stitch. So again, so it's one. So I guess one and two are kind of the same, same space, right, in theory. So, okay, so we've got, we came up at one, we went back down right next to it on top of it, and then the needle comes up at the end of the chain. So you're gonna pull the needle out. And the only thing you have to make sure is that your working yarn is on, is underneath the yarn that you're- Oh, okay. Because otherwise it's just gonna go right through, right? Yeah. Okay. So you've got, so now you've got this little chain here, right? Oh. Um, so you're going to anchor it just by taking a little stitch right on the other side of where you came up. Okay. So this stitch, you don't want to go into the same hole because it'll kind of pull the whole chain into the back of your fabric. So you want to go in just right above. A smidge. Mm -hmm. a smidge, yeah, yeah. So then you're going to pull this yarn. So I guess, you know, on these long chains, it's a little bit tricky because you've got to figure out, you know, how big you want this guy to be. Um, the shorter ones, it's it's a little bit easier because you don't have a lot of options here. So, okay. So now we have, it's like a, a chain with a little stitch that's anchoring it down, right? Mm -hmm. So you can leave it like that or you can choose to fill it in. And I'm going to fill this guy in. So I'm going to come up again at that same bottom spot where we started the chain from. And then you have two options here. You can either go down inside the chain, which would be right under your little pick stitch, mm -hmm. or you can go down on the outside of the chain, which would be right on, on the other end of the pick stitch, right? So one option kind of fills in the center of it like this. So it looks like that. So you can kind of see the chain Oh yeah. Stitch inside it. And then I'll do one with the other way. The other way kind of looks more like this guy when you're finished, because you don't see the little chain in the pick stitch. Okay. So I'm going to do another chain stitch. So it hides the anchor. Exactly. Yeah. So it kind of just looks like three threads, like the other stitch, right? Okay. Okay, so there's your chain stitch. And then I'm gonna come up again. This time you go through the same hole? The same hole, yeah. Okay, and then this time, instead of going down inside, I'm gonna go down on the outside of oh, the okay. chain stitch. So you're, just, you're, kind of, you're covering up the holes that you exactly. come up and out of, okay. okay. So that looks like Oh, yeah. That, right? So it does look different, right? Sure. It's a different look. Like this looks a lot like this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I think this is easier. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can see that, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both they're both simple. But anyway, so this is, um, so that's, like I said, usually you're going to be using this more on little little tiny things or on like, like this would, I would use chain stitch on these little tiny leaves. Mm -hmm. Right. Also. Okay, so um, let's move on to 
this one. This is called closed. I have a little bit of a weird light thing going on there. I don't know what's causing that. Okay, so this is called closed herringbone stitch. So this is a stitch that you would use on a really, you know, just traditional shaped leaf. Um, and it's, it's a nice stitch because it's really quick. Um, you could use satin stitch, of course, but I think this is a little bit, um, it kind of makes the shape of the leaf for you. So you're not having to make, you know, satin stitch, the, the hardest thing is to decide what direction you're going in, right? Mm -hmm. And this stitch kind of naturally lends itself to the leaf shape. Hold on, I've got this whole like little yarn chaos going on back here. I'm trying to, okay. Go ahead and tidy up, all good. All right, yeah, because I have all, look at this like craziness I have going on back here. So that's what you don't want. You don't want to work on multiple stitches at the same time without ending them, so. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this little leaf right here. Okay, so what you're going to do is work from the center out again, and it might even be helpful to draw a little line there just to give you a guide. Um, but this is such a small leaf, you don't really, I don't think that's super necessary. So you're going to, so your number one is going to be at the very tip of the leaf, just right there. So you're going to come up through there. Okay. Your number two is you're going to go down on that center line a little bit. I'm trying to hold this where you can see it. Okay. So you're going to take the needle down on the center line, and then you're going to come up right to the side on, on the leaf shape line of where your number one is. So okay. you're going to be like right to the side and you're kind of following this little black line, right? Okay. So pull that through and then you're going to come down again on the center. So you want to be right underneath mm -hmm. your last little thing and then come up this time. You're going to come up on the opposite side, same thing along the line and pull it through. And then you're gonna go back to the center. And so basically you're just gonna keep, so you're working both sides of the leaf at once versus if you were doing satin stitch, you'd do one side out and then out. So this is kind of nice because it, it will usually end up being a little more symmetrical and it kind of just makes a natural leaf shape without you having to you know, figure out which direction do I want to go. So that's the left side. So then we're going to go back down to the center again. And you're you're going a smidge down each time. Each time you're going just below it. Yeah, not in the same hole, but just right next to it, below it. So none of these stitches are going into the same hole. Not really. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe like with the exception of this little straight stitch, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be in the exact same hole, but it kind of looks better. You'll get a sharper point on the top and bottom if you're going into the same hole. Okay. But, but for the herringbone, it, you should no. be, you should be moving along. Exactly. Yeah. Cause that's how you kind of go down the leaf. So um, so, but look at how fast that was, right? Yeah. So I just took, you know, not very many stitches and I'm already, and look at like what a perfect little leaf shape that is, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like very pretty. It on its own. So this time, because I don't want to go all the way down, I only have this little triangle thing to fill in. I'm just going to go down right there versus go all the way down to the center. And the embroidery police won't come after you for that because there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, you know what, by the time you filled this in, that would probably cover that up, right? Right, Because the, the yarns will kind of all kind of squish together. But I'm going to be a responsible stitcher and fill up that little tiny hole. And I'm going to do that <laughs> on this side. Yeah. <laughs> so. And again, if I were really doing this, I would be doing these after the flowers anyway. So I probably wouldn't be doing these little fill in stitches. Okay. So look at how good that looks. And that was just like a few. Oh, it stitches. really does. Yeah. And it's pretty perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So that's closed herringbone. Um, I'm not gonna do running stitch because I think that we all know how to do running stitch. So this is like that little B trail, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just a, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. And because it's, you know, printed on here, you're not even having to decide. You just follow the tracks all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna do French knot next. That's kind of like the fun stitch that everybody likes, I think. It's really, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like- And would a, you recommend doing the French knot on yeah. the fabric, on the stabilizer first before there's anything else going on? Yes. Yes, because um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just it. Uh, I mean, it would be almost impossible to do French knot without um, the stabilizer because you'd probably be because you'd pull it through right to the other mm -hmm. side. So that's one of the really great things about using the stabilizer for this stitch. OK, so I'm going to. This flower um, is going to be all filled in with French knots, just like this picture here. So I think that it is easier to work from the outside and work your way in, but you can do whatever you want. Um, and I don't know, when I first started doing this, I would make the knots so close together that it would be like this <laughs> kind of dome, you know? <laughs> so. Right. You don't need to have them like butted up against each other. It feels like you should do that. But then once they all kind of like, you know, level out, they kind of fill in the gaps. Right. But if you do that, it's not bad. I mean, if we like, again, if we like poofy, right, then that's, that's so good. That makes me think that when you wash away the stabilizer, that the, the yarn itself of the embroidery blooms a little. It does. Yeah. And especially with the knots, because there's a lot of yarn there. Okay. Um, okay. So I just came up on the edge here. And so what you're going to do is wrap the yarn twice around your needle like so. So I've got my needle pretty close to the stabilizer. And then you're going to go down again. You don't want to go down in the same hole, you, but you want to go down right next to it. If you go down into the same hole, you will pull your knot to the other side. Okay. So I have the two wraps, I don't know if you can see this, they're pretty yeah. close to the needle or to the, the stabilizer. Mm -hmm. You can even like kind of um, hold your working yarn with your left hand if you want. Um, so how tight that, that yarn is wrapped is gonna determine how big your knot is. If, you're, if your wraps are really loose, your knot's gonna be bigger. Um, not that that's wrong, but... Um, it's just a different look. Okay, so now I'm just pulling the yarn. In this stitch, it's really important to not just jam the yarn through there because it will. This thing will un untwist itself for some reason. Okay, so you just pull it through, and then you have this cute little anchored knot like that. Aww. Cute. And you just keep, you know. It sound it see it probably seems like it's really I'm going really slow, but you get you get pretty fast at them after a while. And they're really, they're just really satisfying to do, you know, cause they're so cute and they're kind of brainless. So again, we're gonna wrap twice, go down right next to the spot that you came up on. I'm gonna give this a little tug. And then pull it through. So if you want, bigger knots my suggestion would be because i've done a lot of experiment like i tried wrapping it three times and what happens is the the knot gets really messy because this the little circle part kind of sits up and mm -hmm. gets a little fray looking so if you want a bigger knot knot i would suggest switching to a bigger needle so like i use these needles sometimes okay so this is like a another it's funny that I'm giving you these quick tips, like you're in this mad rush, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were doing this, this, this flower, I probably maybe would use this needle instead, just because now you, you make fewer knots, right? Can you switch and show us one with the big yeah. ones? 
So this is, so again, this is that chenille 22 needle. And then this needle, I kind of stumbled across. It's called a yarn darner. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, do you know what that is? Okay. I mean, the, the hole is oddly not very big on it. Like the chenille needle, needle hole is actually bigger, but it's, but the yarn, the needle is thicker, but it's got a sharp point on it. So Very unlike sharp. a tapestry needle, which would be way too dull, it's not as thick as a tapestry, but it's 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 getting there, right? Yeah. So I like these yarn darners to make bigger um, knots. So um, again, it's the same technique. So, um, oh yeah, so oh yeah, mm -hmm. that that's you know a bigger knot. Um, it's kind of like the look of the bigger knots is kind of cute too. I don't know, mm -hmm. or uh, bumpy looking, or I don't know how to what the right word is, but um, and I think it's actually even a little bit easier to do the knots with this yarn darner needle but you know this is some i just discovered this just a little bit ago this whole yarn darner needle so i don't know i think i actually was trying to buy a tapestry needle and i bought yeah. the wrong thing and went, like, you know what this would work really well for embroidery so um anyway. especially since you're embroidering with yarn that's well, but why does it have the smaller eye on it? That's what yeah. I can't figure. So it's it, the yarn darner is it's actually I think for sock darning. Yeah. And somebody but, can correct me if I'm wrong, but I I think it's for sock darning, so it's a little bit longer because you want yes. the needle to go um across whatever the hole in the sock is or the hole in the mm, garment is. Yeah. And it's very sharp so that you can make nice neat holes. So is it because you're working with like a thread or a thin, really a thinner thin yarn? So um, some of the companies that make darning threads or darning wools, um, they are, they're, they're itty bitty compared to, because they may not be darning handmade socks. They may be darning machine made socks. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's our big I like that. French nets. Beautiful. French nets. Um. Are we, so do I have five minutes? Yeah, sure, <laughs> okay. yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do, so this is probably the most difficult stitch um, in this collection. And honestly, you don't have to do this. It's this little weird three daisy flower. Um, you could use straight stitches. You could use that tripled up straight stitch here. Mm -hmm. But the only reason I did this was because I did a class and I have all these little like weird swatches that I play around with. And I have this swatch. I have a Japanese book that's all this. It's called bullion stitch. It's all designs with this bullion stitch. And it's really, I, mean, I don't know if you could see it. Talk about. Oh, yeah. You very know, textural. It, yeah. yeah. And it's very, it's very fast. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Like, because this is one stitch, right? So, I mean, think about it. this is just this many stitches, right? So everyone would take the swatch and go like, oh my gosh, what is this thing? It's so cool. And and I didn't have it in my first pattern. So I just did this flower just intentionally so I could have something with bullion stitch. But if it, you know, if it's gonna make you crazy doing it, then <laughs> you don't have to do it. Okay. So I gotta even like look at the directions when I do this because I can't, I don't do it very often. Okay, so we're gonna just do go along the spokes of this flower. Um, okay, so I'm gonna come up. Here, let me come up on a new flower. I think it'll be easier to see. Okay, so I'm gonna come up at the bottom of the flower. From the center. From the center. Okay, now let me make sure I'm not screwing this up. Okay, so then I'm gonna turn it around is this right? One, two. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go down at the opposite end of my little petal. Okay. And then come back up at one. Okay. So we're, we came up at one, went down at two, came up, 
came back up at one. Okay, but you don't want to pull your needle all the way through. So you're going to leave it kind of in between those two stitches. And now you're going to take the working yarn. So this is kind of just a, like a French knot on steroids, right? Because you're basically doing kind of the same thing, whereas you're not, you're wrapping the yarn. I'm going to do five. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is the trickiest part of it because what you have to do is pull your your needle through these five wraps without letting these five wraps go all cattywampus on you. Oh, oh it's like the Italian tubular cast. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. But it's with this, you know, fine <laughs> yarn. And I don't know. It's and a, a sharp needle. And a sharp, <laughs> sharp needle. Sharp needle. So it is Do you easier. use a thimble? You can. Um, I'm going to try to not. So so I, I wrapped it really close to where the needle came up. You don't want okay. a big, long thread there because then you're going to get a little gap. Okay, so I got my five wraps. I think what I think is the easiest thing to do is to kind of put your finger down on those five mm -hmm. wraps to try and keep them in place. Yeah. And instead of using a thimble, I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to take this little. I would use pliers. <laughs> I've used pliers before, but you know what? So this is the that little Haya Haya. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing. So I had this sitting around and this actually works pretty good because the, the problem with a thimble is it's really hard to get it because yes. the needle's really close to the fabric right so it's hard to get the the right and you have to kind of lift it up which may make all your things go so that actually like that actually worked I got the needle through so but you could use pliers too like uh, that, uh, I have um like a soft nosed plier that's got plastic around the jaw yeah mm -hmm. that would work that would definitely work okay so I got it through and then this one, you really don't want to pull fast. Okay, so I've got my five wraps are under my finger there. And so here they are. Oh, cool. Yeah. You just kind of like pull them over and then you're going to go back down into, I think that's number two, right? So you're, coming, right. you're just going one, two, one, two. So, so now they kind of magically just get in line and you just got to pull the needle through. Number oh, I two. like that. See, and it makes this nice little weird coily thing, right? So I yeah. would have thought that that was like a tiny little satin stitch and or that you do um, a stitch and then like, like a stitch around it. Right, right. Horizontal stitch. Yeah, yeah. But so this is so much faster than doing that, right? Yeah. If you can, if you can get it. But like I said, right. you know, the only, you know, difficult thing about it is that trying to pull through those little five wraps right that's where you really <clears throat> go south on this thing and it's you know it just takes practice right it's not yeah. two three four five and again if you use the bigger needle you'll have a bigger coily mm -hmm. guy. i don't know maybe and it's longer so you might have more to pull or push from that's a good point because this is a really short needle to be trying to get you know five wraps take up like half the needle right so i'm right. gonna use my little rubber guy again so now I'm, i can tell that i'm a little cattywampus on this thing somehow okay okay and then also so once you get the needle through you also have to get the eye of the needle with the yarn in it which you, that gets a little hung up sometimes too so let me make sure this is straightened out. Uh oh. You may get to see me screw something up. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, so you'll be just a regular person then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Nope. Well, yeah, it worked. Did it All work? right. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right. It oh, worked. very cool. Well, there's some it's little great. magic that happens under your fingers there. That's clearly. right. <laughs> But sometimes it doesn't happen, though. I'm just saying. Sometimes you do yeah. that and everything looks good. And then you pull it through and it somehow, you know, magically unwinds. But you get a you get a feel for it, though. So, like, you know, what I would say is just don't do it for the first time on your sweater. You know, practice it. <laughs> yeah. 
but um, practice first. But, <laughs> don't do it on your priceless Steinway. Right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, so anyway, so that's so we actually went through all of the stitches on this. That's awesome, fantastic. Cool. Yeah. So, um, can I take like two minutes and show you? Please do. So I've got. And we have to tell you that we have to order more. Yeah, we've been selling them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay. we'll, be getting on, we'll be getting on the, the wholesale oh, site. That's right. Nice. Oh, yeah. So I have a little container of water. Okay, so if I were doing this um, on a big, you know, on a sweater or something, I would just probably, I don't know, I do it two ways. Sometimes I soak it and then kind of run it under the faucet. Um, or you, the longer you soak it, it will kind of just dissipate. If you run it under the faucet, the pressure of the faucet will kind of make the, all the stabilizer go away. Whereas if you soak it, it just kind of melts. Dissolves. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm usually in a hurry. So I usually just run it under the water and it's kind of fun to do it. Right. So, but this is, so I just have a little container of water here and here's my, my stabilizer um you know you can trim it around uh it's all gonna go away anyways and then you run the risk of cutting your <laughs> embroidery which i have done before so so you don't don't get too crazy about trimming it um that sounds like something i would do <laughs> it's really easy to because you're you're gonna you know, once you start doing it you're like oh i'm gonna get really close right and it just yeah, yeah it's not a good idea so. yeah, yeah right right okay so i'm just soaking it here and um like i said if you were running this under the faucet this stuff will just kind of start shooting off to the sides but when you soak it it kind of just gets soft um so i would you know leave it soaking for maybe like 20 minutes or something but you can already i don't know if you can see I want it to get a little more wet. You just had 20 people get closer to their computers. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to, if I, if I lift it up, it's not, it's going to yeah, stop yeah. dissolving. So I'm trying yeah. to let it go here. Um, so if you could see from where I'm looking at, there's all these. So the, the stabilizer kind of comes off in little, little splinty specky things. So it's kind of like floating. Wisps. Around the You're right. It comes Wisps. up in wisps. Okay. <laughs> so. I don't know if you can see this. So anyway, so yeah. the stabilizer, all the stabilizer around it is pretty much gone. gone yeah. and, but, but what you what you can see, see how there's like little black marks? Yeah. So that's actually the printing. So you want that to go away too. So that's why you kind of need to let it soak for oh, longer. Okay. Because yeah. eventually that's going to all, because all that stuff is being um, held on to by the stitches but it will dissolve after so, a while. So you like to run it under the faucet. And when you, if you ran that, it under the faucet, you could be like going like that. And it's and that stuff will just come shooting off. Right. So do yeah. you find that it's better for that to be cool water? I've done. Um, I think when the water is a little bit warm, it does dissolve faster, but it's not like, even if you use cold water, it's not like it's going to take hours. You know what I mean? So again, it's right. weird, like how we complain about something that's going to take 30 seconds longer. Right, <laughs> like, right. We're trying to save 30 <laughs> seconds on something we're hand knitting and hand embroidering, which sure. is kind of ridiculous. I think maybe it's not that you're, you're excited, right? You want to see the sure. right finish. You want thought, the shrinky things to shrink. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. Running it under the water is just kind of fun because you just see the stuff kind of comes, goes shooting off. It's a little more, you know, it's a little more satisfying. Know. Yeah. It's a little more satisfying. It's like doing bubble wrap or something. Yeah. I guess. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so sometimes like this is a little, I can see a little bit of the black. Um, you can go in there with like a, knitting needle or something and kind of if you have if you see that it's not going away but my guess is if you let it soak long enough it's just okay. gonna go away oh, on its own. yeah nice so anyways but you can kind of see that the paper is gone right yeah that's it's great very little effort right yeah. so 
So anyway, um, awesome. The magic of wash away stabilizer. Love it. Okay. Well, does anyone have any questions or? Yeah. You've got questions. You can unmute yourself and. I'm, I'm holding up the, ch I'm looking at the chat, but we have a number of people on. It was a very clear yeah, demonstration. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> oh, good. I feel like yeah. I can go do it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, it's, you know, it, it's really, really easy. And I think like um, a lot of people, when they see the samples, they get really intimidated and think, cause it's so detailed, right? And they mm -hmm. think like, oh, mm -hmm. I could never embroider like that. But like, you know, you just saw how easy it was. There wasn't a lot of, other than that bullion stitch. <laughs> There wasn't right. a lot of, you know, fussy skill involved, right? And even so. that, if you have the right, like if you get a longer needle and if yes. you do have some kind of, maybe not a plier, but something, um, if you don't have the um, Haya Haya, <laughs> you, you can use rubber gloves. You can. And I, and they sell... On Amazon, they sell these, like, um, I think it's like a jar opener. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like this stuff, right, in a big square. In fact, I had a bunch of those that I cut up, and somehow I've lost all of them. So you can buy that on Amazon for really cheap, and you just cut a little square piece. Those are better. This is really thick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to grip. The the one, the jar opener thing is thin. So if mm -hmm. you cut just like a little rectangle, you can really just, like, grab it and pull that needle out. So. Right. Yeah, and I I like rubber gloves. Yeah, they rubber gloves work really nicely. Too. If you get the like the dishwashing kind of rubber yeah, gloves, not too, that are a yeah. little bit thicker, but not not right. too thick, you can you know cut the the fingers off of them and use them. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a really um, good idea. I was like, I was thinking like having to put rubber gloves on. Right, 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 right. People. It's like that's gonna be a dedicated too. pair that you cut the fingers. Yes, off. but if there you, you cut go. The finger, um, that is awesome. Roxanne said that she learned a lot. Jeanette is asking if is it is it easy to cover moth holes? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I guess it depends on how big the hole is, right? Because I mean, that's the great thing okay. of stitching through the stabilizer, right? That it secures it. But if the hole is too big, it may not work. Well, out. and you may need to put a little piece of something on the other side. Yeah. Cause it's got to anchor to something, but you yeah. could use a little, like a little piece of felt like this or something, a thin piece, something that you can anchor. Yeah. Through. Yeah. So right through it. Right. Yeah. But a little tiny moth hole, you could probably cinch closed. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's just oh, a yeah, little, sure. little right. pin dot moth hole before they get bigger. Right. Because if you leave it, if you don't repair or mend a moth hole it can stretch out or sort of oh, unravel sure. a little. Yeah. yeah and I think that this is easier than doing that whole little weavy darning thing yeah <laughs> really, I've done that before it's really tedious to do yeah that. well it's a whole it's a whole different skill set yes <laughs> yeah yes. yeah but it's very fussy trying to do the little weaving thing is I don't know I wasn't very good at it I think this is better and then you get a nice little flower too and you get a flower yeah it's yeah. awesome um it's it's been such Thank a pleasure you. Yes, to have this has you been great come on and uh I don't think we have any other questions and Thank you so very, very much. Um, maybe we can have you come back on the screen so we can see your face before oh, we say goodbye. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now I got to stop. There, there you are. are. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having yes. me. It's really fun. Anytime. <laughs> it's great. Well, thank you. And we will, um, we will still have the trunk show in the store for another week and um we yep. will be also having the paquetto kits and the scandy and the flourish stick and stitch kits and now we know how to use them and That's we will right. put this um video we will link this video to the paquetto kits on our website okay. so that people can find it right away great great and thank you so much yes thank you this thank has been a retreat thank you thank you yes. all right bye-bye bye-bye bye-bye